Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and today we have a very special guest. She is only 15 years old, and she is a Christian conservative who is standing up for the faith and freedom of this country. And she has a show called The Patriot Talk, which I encourage everyone to subscribe to. That will be in the description below. And I don't know, she has just been such a blessing to get to know, and she has amazing resources, and it's just amazing to see young people standing up for the truth and standing up for freedom. So without further ado, it's my honor and privilege to welcome Caroline Smith. Caroline, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. It's such an honor. I'm, I really appreciate you inviting me on. Yes, of course. Well, I'm thankful that you're here with us today. And I would like for you to just share with the listeners who don't know you, um, maybe just a little bit of your upbringing we can start, and then what are you doing today, and I just all that fun stuff. I mean, I'm just honored to have you on. I've been following and, like, watching your stuff, and so we'll get into that. But I want you to share, like, where you were born and just kind of your upbringing we'll start with. Of course. Well, thank you so much again for having me on. It's such an honor to be here talking with you. So yeah, my name is Caroline Smith. I'm 15 years old. I'm a proud Christian and American patriot. My entire life, I've lived in Northeast Alabama. I love Alabama. It's the greatest state in the United States. (laughs) Um, I want to run for governor here someday. I absolutely love it here. But yeah, so I never actually intended on you know, getting involved in politics. But it was in 2020 when I was told that I couldn't go to church Mm -hmm. that I started realizing, okay, this is wrong. I have to start speaking up and defending my freedom and, you know, fighting for the truth because my granddad, he's actually a pastor. So Mm -hmm. I went to the same church all my life. Everyone that goes there, you know, they're like family to me. A lot of them actually are my family. Mm -hmm. So um, it was really crazy when the government told me that I couldn't go to church. And that's how I kind of, that's how I kind of got involved in politics. Um, I'm homeschooled. I love it. So I I have a lot of time to kind of work on this. God has really called me to do this show and, you know, work on the Patriot Talk. So I'm really excited that I get to have the opportunity to do this. So yeah, that's kind of who I am. (laughs) And it's awesome because you're only 15 years old and you have your own show, which the Patriot Talk and everyone, go check that out. That'll be in the description below. Thank you. And then you've been on other things. I've seen you on Newsmax. And what are some other um, just platforms that you've been on just recently? Yeah, so I've gotten to have some incredible opportunities God has blessed me with. I've gotten to be a political panelist twice on Newsmax. Mm-hmm. That was really fun. I got to do a panel with Isabel Brown. Yes. That was a total surprise. I didn't know until I was on air <laughs> that I was going to be on with Isabel Brown. So that was kind of crazy. Um, I've gotten to be on Real America's Voice for an interview segment. I did that last week. And I've gotten to be on a few nationally syndicated radio shows and hopefully soon One American News Network this month. So I, it's been really, really fun. It's awesome. And it's just so cool just to see the joy of the Lord that you have, like you're always smiling and just how, I mean, it's just so cool to see people your age. I know there's so many other people we've had on the podcast. We just last week had two kids that are 15 years old and they have a turning point um, chapter at their high school and just the things that they're going through. But just seeing these young people stand up for truth, because I think nowadays we just think, oh, it's going to be okay. Like we'll just live the life we can right now and just cross our fingers hope it's good but like what we're realizing is if we don't stand up like we're not gonna have any freedoms or anything so exactly we need to do this now so it's really cool that you are caring about that and really have this fight in you to do that but what so you said you got to start started because of like the shutdown with churches but have you always been into politics your family like what's the the passion but behind that too So in retrospect, I I guess I kind of was always into politics because in the sixth grade, I ran for vice president (laughs) and I won. So Kamala Harris can't say she was the first Ah, female vice president. No, I'm kidding. It was really fun. Um, But in 2016, I was actually I was in public school at that time. Mm. So, um, yeah, but I just said probably made no sense because I started off and I'm homeschooled and then I won class vice president. (laughs) That didn't even make sense. But so um, um, I used to be in public school and uh during the time of the 2016 election, I kind of fell in love with politics because I loved President Trump. Yeah. I loved what he stood for. And a lot of people don't like his personality, but I loved his personality. Yeah. I was like, he's bold. He's confident. Mm-hmm. I was like, I was, I was talking to my parents. I'm like, you have to vote for this guy. Yeah. So it was really, it was really awesome to see him get elected. Um, 
And I remember it being inauguration day back in 2016 or 2017. And uh, I was in public school. I was in a class of over 120 kids. I was the only kid who decided to sit in the classroom and watch the inauguration <laughs> instead of going outside and playing games. And I don't regret it to this day Amen. because that was such a historical moment. Yeah. I could feel like the patriotism, the energy in the air. It was amazing. Um, but then after President Trump was elected, you know, I was so excited and all. I kind of forgot about politics for a little while yeah. because I didn't have to think about politics. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, 12 years old, like what kid has to think about politics, you know? Yeah. And I got to enjoy my life. I did gymnastics. I did cheerleading and I was on the robotics team and, um, I learned how to play piano, fun stuff, you know, mm -hmm. like actually being a kid. Yeah. And, uh, as I told you in 2020, I was kind of forced to reignite a love for politics because my freedom was taken away. And like you said, I realized, okay, even though I am young, I have to stand up and defend my freedom or in the future, I won't have any freedom. Yeah. Exactly. And I just remember that election, too, like it was yesterday. I remember we were um, with uh, one of the pastors here at the church and we were watching at his place and we're like, oh, he lost. Like, it's over. Like, yeah. and I remember when first when Obama had won, I remember crying as a kid. I forgot how oh. young I was. I was just like, no. And so I was just bummed again. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, again? And this is the first year I was able to vote. And so I was yeah. so bummed. But then it was just so cool. Like the turnaround, I'm like, that was God. Like God it was did 100 that. God. And it was just so amazing because like my dad, um, he's from New York. And so he likes that about my dad's really bold and stuff. And mm -hmm. and so that's why we love that about Trump is that he's he yeah. says the things that people are thinking, but they're not they're not bold enough to say. And we love that because mm -hmm. we need that. Like my dad always jokes like, we don't need pastors or leaders who are even jellyfish, like who don't have a backbone. We need people. Yeah, exactly. Like we always bring up the Black Robe Regiment. It was the pastors who are standing and fighting. And the sad thing nowadays is like, we're trying to just like, I love even Ali Bestucky. She's like, we need to make men mm. masculine again. Like we're putting down this. And I'm sure, yes, like there are certain things with Trump where he has done things, but we're not voting for just a person and his things exactly we're voting for a policy and he is standing for life he's been the most pro-life president which that's the main thing if you're a christian right it talks about in proverbs 31 we need to defend those who can't speak up those who are being crushed like those who cannot defend themselves mm -hmm. and i mean i just love that he did that because i know people can put him down but i'm like he was standing for the truth when others weren't and it was just awesome but um, other things that I would like to know just about you. Um, so growing up in school and what was that like? I mean, you're homeschooled, but there's kids nowadays, like you were saying, they're just wanting to play sports. Like I'm thinking about me in 15. I'm like, I just cared about sports, which I saw your video. You were amazing at um, gymnastics. It wasn't an aerial oh, you did. You. What was that? Yes, I think it was the front area. Okay, it that was. Yeah, my mom used to do gymnastics, but I'm like, I can do a back bend, but that's about it. Nice, but that's awesome. <laughs> it's just so cool that it's like, you're still a kid. You still love to do those things. But what is it like with friends or people you're around? Because, I mean, it's probably not that popular to do that. But what does it look like for you and just the people you're around? Well, my family is super, super mm -hmm. encouraging, super supportive. So they've really, you know, pushed me to keep going with this. And I absolutely love it. My close friends, they go to church with me. They're awesome. They're like, you know, they aren't necessarily into politics or anything, but they, they encourage me in what I'm doing. So it's really great. They're all so supportive. Um, I've even made some good friends actually within this movement. Mm -hmm. So it's really surprising. You know, you think you start a conservative show, you're going to get a lot of hate, mm -hmm. yeah, sure, whatever. But you actually connect with a lot of people yeah. that are like-minded, such as, you know, Turning Point USA mm -hmm. has allowed me to connect with so many people, so many close friends friends so yeah that that's pretty much yeah. that's pretty much that yeah. and it's awesome because we need to realize too just with everything going on is that I think Prager was saying this is like there are a lot more for us it's just that the sad thing is they're mm -hmm. not willing to speak up so they're agreeing yeah. with this stuff but they mm -hmm. almost need that one person who's going to stand out in the crowd and just say like hey this is the truth and I love it too I've said it so many times that I'm like we're not making anything up this is in the Bible and we're just obeying what the Bible said. So for you mm -hmm. as a Christian, why are these things also so important for you to stand up? It's not just, oh, I'm a good old conservative. It's like you're a <laughs> Christian first. And how does that affect like the way you live? 
Exactly. Well, the reason I'm involved in politics is because of my faith. Like mm-hmm. I told you, when I was told I couldn't go to church, mm-hmm. I was like, this is ridiculous. Yep. And by the United States Constitution, we are granted the right to, you know, free speech and freedom of religion. Yep. This is the greatest nation in the history of the world, freest nation in the history of the world. I love it here. So my faith has really, really impacted my politics when it comes to, like you said, abortion. Mm -hmm. That's been like my major issue is abortion. I think it's so, so sad that so many innocent unborn babies are killed every single day in this country. Those those unborn babies are granted the same First Amendment, right? The same constitutional rights as every other American. And it's so sad that millions of them are being killed every single day by the federal tax dollars of our parents yep. and your money. It's so, so sad. But yeah, I've definitely, my faith has encouraged me to speak up for the truth and to speak up, to fight for those who can't fight for themselves because the Bible tells us to do that. Another thing that I like that the Bible brings up is um, how important it is to build a wall yep. and to protect your nations. And um, a lot of Christians um, didn't vote. They're like, you know what? You know, we shouldn't be involved in politics as Christians. I think that's the most ridiculous thing ever. Mm-hmm. Because like you said, if we are fighting for biblical principles, if we are fighting for life, if we are fighting to keep our nation safe, then we show that by our vote. Amen. We show that by our vote. Exactly. So just like you said, it is so, so important that Christians are involved in politics. And that is why I'm involved in politics is because of my faith. Amen. Amen. And I like how you said that with the wall, because I mean, Nehemiah was building a wall. Like it talks about that in um, Ezekiel with the watchman on the wall, like all these things. Mm-hmm. And I remember I was watching you on the Rick and Bubba show and I, they were saying, they're like, even heaven has a wall and a gate. (laughs) Okay. So, I mean, come on. But, um, I kind of want to talk about that. So we're going to jump around and I again, encourage everyone to go check out the Patriot talk. It's going to be in the description below, but you have so many amazing short clips and I love that. I'm like our videos, we have it up to 45 minutes to an hour and I'm trying to get short clips, but I love that you just like jam pack information and truth in it and I just love that because nowadays like everyone's so busy and stuff but it's just so cool because I feel like that's like really when you can condense something and like true fast like sure people can like ramble and stuff but when you can do that and get all the facts together I just think it's awesome how you do that and how you're so passionate and joyful um but let's talk about that let's talk about what's happening at the border and all the craziness and there's people saying like just let them all in right that's the loving thing to you to do but can you explain how that is not actually the best thing to do especially well we have to put our country first that's the first and foremost thing you know it isn't like we're being mean by not letting these people in Mm -hmm. if anyone has good intentions and they want to come to america and work and achieve the american dream i 100 percent want that for them I am so blessed that God has allowed me to live in this country. I know you feel the same way. So I, I'm not against anyone coming in here legally. Exactly. That's the thing. Legally, we can't just let all these child predators and mm-hmm. drug dealers, who knows who's coming in. Yeah. We can't just allow our country to be destroyed by that. So if we care about the people of our country and we care about our children, which we should always put first because this is our country, other countries can care about themselves mm-hmm. first, but we have to protect ourselves. It's not selfish. Mm-hmm. It's not selfish at all. We have to make sure that we are protecting our people. And then that way, everyone that comes in legally can be protected in the same way. And that's how we have a country that is full of prosperity and growth and safety. Exactly. And it's so sad because we have people at our church who have done it the right way. They've come Mm -hmm. um, from South Africa and it took so much work and so much Mm -hmm. time and like and then even our people who did come the right way and then to get their citizenship and like the tests they do. They have to work hard for it, just like anyone should. I mean, like, think about it. Australia, they make it difficult for anyone to come. Like, you have to have this amount of money. You have to make sure you have a job. But America, oh, we're mean and awful for doing that. And it's just so sad because then there's people who are actually doing it the right way. They're not able Mm -hmm. to get in, and they're pushed back from coming. But I think it's also, I mean, it's clearly, too, because they know that these people are probably more conservative and they'll be voting for those things so even cuba we're like why are they not letting the people from cuba in? it's like well because they know Mm -hmm. that those people they're letting everyone else in but can you explain Mm -hmm. what's happening with cuba and then we'll also that will lead into like communism and all that for those who don't know what that is you can (laughs) explain that to them 
Of course. Well, okay, first of all, communism is a failed political ideology, and if we implement it into our nation, which the people in our government are trying to do, then we will fail, because there are no examples in which a country under communism, socialism, has ever succeeded. Exactly. But our country, under capitalism, under freedom, has just thrived. Mm -hmm. So that's, (laughs) that's really what I wanted to talk about. But when it comes to Cuba and uh, even Afghanistan, there are so many people that would gladly come over here and they would support our economy and they would have the same kind of, you know, patriotism that we do about this nation. But like you said, the Democrats, the government, Mm -hmm. but mostly the Democrats don't want to let these people in because they know that it will actually benefit our country. They want to let in the child predators, the drug dealers who anyone, you know, Mm -hmm. um, that will, you know, be receiving government handouts and will be infiltrating our schools, infiltrating our jobs illegally. And like you said, that's unfair to the people who are actually working hard to get in and actually support our nation. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And then that also leads into people saying, oh, well, you're just a racist. You just don't want the other people in. And which that's not true. You just went to an event, um, the Critical Race Theory with Charlie Kirk in Alabama. Yeah. But um, tell us about that. What did you learn there? I mean, obviously you knew what that was before that. But for those who don't know what that is and what's being taught, can you explain that to people? Yeah, of course. Well, critical race theory is, you know, they make it out to be like, okay, we're teaching all the races how to get along, (laughs) particularly teaching white people how to get along with African Americans. And it's all kind of, all kinds of crazy because America is not racist whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Americans aren't racist. Everyone is granted equal opportunity here. That doesn't mean that everyone will have the same outcome. We're all granted equal opportunity. So critical race theory is actually teaching, um, you know, younger Americans to victimize their mindset based upon the color of their skin, which is the dumbest thing um, ever. I mean, when you really think about the principle behind what critical race theory teaches is that to judge people off of the color of their skin, um, you know, how far are you going to go in this life? How can you succeed? Well, Mm -hmm. What matters is your race. It doesn't matter how hard you work. And I think that's ridiculous that critical race theory teaches that. But yeah, I did. I went to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and I got to hear Charlie Kirk. He's incredible, incredibly bold. Um, and one girl had asked him questions about, like, she was like, well, isn't critical race theory a good thing? Because it's teaching Americans, you know, to get along with each other. And he was like, absolutely not. This is, you know, that's what a college student thinks. That's what they're being told. Um, it's critical race theory teaches people to get along with each other. That's not true in the least bit. Critical race theory was created to divide us. And that's how we can be overpowered by the government. If you really think about it is when we're divided. But when we start looking at America in its entirety and we look, okay, we don't care about your age. We don't care about your race. Like that's the, when we all stand together, that's when we're most powerful. And I think critical race theory is just an attempt to separate us further, which would be horrible. Yeah, and I love how I was watching one of your little videos, and it was so good because you explained the example of it's like you have two teams, and one team wins, and the other team loses, Mm -hmm. but they both get a trophy. And it's like to the world, they're like, Mm -hmm. oh, but they both won. But you're like, but no, they didn't because it's if it's equal, it's really no one won. But I feel like the world is now just giving out participation awards, like everything's okay. Exactly. But then for the people who do work hard, why are you going to work hard then if it's like – I mean, think about it. Even in the Bible, God talks about those who like there's rewards that we'll get in heaven. So I'm like, even it's biblical that if you do, if you like that, God will give you rewards as you do those things. So I think it's just like you said, it's so sad that nowadays it is where we're judging people based off their skin color. And also what I think, too, is that when someone let's just say that is true, let's just say they really do feel like I had this one girl tell me she's like, well, it's just not fair because you have green eyes and lighter skin. So you're automatically like, if I was trying to get the job and you were trying to get the job, you would get it. And I'm like, okay, well, first of all, if that's actually happening, like God is sovereign and he would judge that if someone was doing that. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. when you think about it, even when people say it, like, let's just say that was true. We also need to look at it in as Christians in a godly way, especially because a lot of times I see Christians standing up for this and like, especially when everything was going on, like putting the black square and be a, being a part mm. of um, Black Lives Matter and all that stuff. And but not really understanding what that is doing, like in all of that, it just shows me that people don't understand, like God, God will defend you if because there, there are some people who are out there who truly that is what they do. 
but God will judge them. And if you're doing your best and doing all your work, like Colossians 323, all your work for the Lord, he will get you to where you need to be. He will give you that job. Mm -hmm. And in America, like you said, there's so much opportunity. But what are the other words you said? There's equality and there's also, what is the other word? Well, everyone's granted equal opportunity, mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean that we'll always get equal yep. outcome. Critical race theory wants to, you know, judge your outcome based on the color of your skin. And that's not true because, like you said, this is America. Yeah. Equal opportunity. Exactly. How hard you work will determine what kind of Amen. job you get. Not the color of your skin, not the color of your eyes, nothing. Yeah. And everyone has said that. Everyone that I know who has started from a family that they would feel, oh, I don't have as much money. And so it's not fair. Like other people have money. And it's like, if anything, when you go to heaven, you will probably be rewarded even more so because of how hard you work to get to where you are. But it's almost mm-hmm. sad because there are some people who have everything given to them, right? Even look at some children who are born and like celebrities, but they have everything. But if you don't have God and you feel like you didn't work, like if your dad just pays for everything for you, you don't work. It's like with anyone, you feel useless. Like we were meant to work hard. And I love it too, because let's talk about this too. But the Bible says any man who doesn't work shall not eat. And I th- I think you had mentioned, I think it was, was it 68 million people are on government um assistance yeah that sounds that sounds right and so Mm -hmm. that just shows us that like there's a lot of people who are probably able to work or at least do a job like if you're handicapped i know people who are handicapped and like my my well it's my sister-in-law's mom so my brother's mother-in-law basically my Mm mother-in-law i basically treat like that um she still works and does things even though she is completely disabled and like had a stroke like can't move her most Mm -hmm. of her body and stuff and she still does things and like I think that that's the same thing with anyone like we need to be able to work hard even if like that means just doing like being working at a call center or something you can't Mm -hmm. and like but if you truly can't of course like we'll take care of you that's the whole point of of it Mm -hmm. but it was supposed to be the church that was taking care of these people not the government so can you talk about that and why government was not supposed to be god and like rule over that but now it is like that absolutely and why they, that's dangerous yeah absolutely it's it's terrifying it's yeah just like you said it's dangerous one quote that i really love by ronald reagan is if we don't remember that we are one nation under god then we will be one nation gone yep. under oh my Trinity goodness I put on the, the double camera the full camera that's right. hilarious i did not even <laughs> see that i promise that's awesome <laughs> that is so funny But I absolutely love that quote because it reminds us, you know, the government is not in control of us. God is in control of us. Like, say, God is sovereign. Mm -hmm. And the church should always be there to take care of those who cannot take care of themselves. The Bible tells us to do that. But the government was not created as sort of a handout system, you know, to give to anyone and everyone who doesn't want to work. Not because they can't work, just because they don't want to work and they have the, you know, chance not to work. And really, when you think about that in a logical way, it makes sense that people want to be lazy and get checks from the government. Because if you could sit at home on your couch eating potato chips and be getting paid more than you can to go to a job, then why wouldn't you? I mean, that's the logical decision. But it's absolutely detrimental to our country because just like you said— there's no reward when you're handed mm-hmm. everything. No. And then that's why the no. suicide does go up. Like people do feel like junk because they don't have any duty or anything to do. And that's where mm-hmm. it is cool because as Christians, like God has put certain callings. Like for you, you probably didn't think you would ever have a show like this, but now you do. And I love, they asked you like, where do you see yourself, Caroline, in three years? And I was hoping you would answer <laughs> it the way you did. And you did. You said, well, wherever the Lord wills, like wherever he has me. And that's cool because oh. we literally, I always say that to people. I'm like, we don't know. We don't know where God's going to have us in five years. But mm-hmm. the main thing to say is I just want to be in God's will. Whatever God's will is, that's what I want to be in. And I don't know, but I trust that God does. And as you continue to seek him, he will give you direction, right? The Bible says, trust in the mm-hmm. Lord with Absolutely. all your heart and lean not on your own understandings. In all your way, acknowledge him and he will direct your path or keep your path straight. And so there's a lot of people who are like, I don't know what to do. What's, what am I supposed to do? I'm like, read the, read the word of God because Ali Beth Stuckey in her podcast room, it says, Ronald Reagan, it says all the, ma- the problems that men face are in the covers of the Bible. So like everything that we're discouraged about, we don't know, the Bible talks about it. And like, again, we said, we're not just making up these policies and these things because, oh, I just 
think it's good that we um we protect like unborn lines i just i just feel that and it's like it's not a feeling like the bible talks about i said mm-hmm. i was i'm like just read psalm 139 and if that doesn't move you to know like the way that god thinks about us from the beginning the moment mm-hmm. of conception mm-hmm. then i that's that's kind of scary if people are that heartless and they can't feel that i but, agree <laughs> um i also want to talk about so with christians i mean we already talked about churches are being attacked, right? They are allowing strip clubs and bars to be open, but the church had to be shut down. Can you tell Crazy. us why do you think they're attacking Christians so much? And what can we do as Christians to not be discouraged during this time? Well, the reason, 100% the reason um, that the government is attacking, you know, Christians and, you know, churches over these, you know, other things is because this is not a physical attack. This is not a a physical battle that's going on in our country. It is a spiritual battle. 100%. There is nothing wrong with opening up churches. According to our constitution, churches should have Mm -hmm. never shut down in the first place. But just like we talked about, this is not a physical battle. This is a spiritual battle. And that's why the government has attacked our churches and attacked Christians over everybody else. And they continue to do so to this day. And it's like, it makes me sad too, because I see so many Christians who are just like, well, we just have to take it, you know, we we can't do anything. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's not true at all. I mean, when we think about it, every single time you see in the Bible, he always, he does talk about like, watch my wall. If you see the enemy coming and you don't warn them, their blood will be on your head. So it talks about doing something Mm -hmm. and also talks about the wicked, lazy servant. We can't be thinking and saying like, oh, well you know, there's nothing I can do. Like it's already going to America's going down. Mm -hmm. It's like, we have to occupy and do our part because we're going to be judged when we stand before God. He's going to judge us. If we were just like, Oh, I just, I just gave up, but we need to fight to the end. And I know people are like, you said fight. And it's like, we're not saying in the moments, like we're not being crazy Mm -hmm. and like, Oh, let's do riots and like take our guns out. No, we're just saying that there has to be freedom. Like, Freedom of speech. I love how you mm-hmm. talked about that. That's the most important. If we don't have that, then really, we don't really have anything. What do we and have? And then, right, mm-hmm. the right to bear arms. We also have, can you talk about, for those who don't know, there's more amendments. I know most people just know the first and second, but mm-hmm. the 14th Amendment. Can mm-hmm. you bring that up? And then also mm-hmm. we can kind of transition into vaccine mandates and how mm-hmm. that is not okay. So can you talk about that? Yeah, well, here in America, we're granted the God-given right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And what grants us those rights is the 14th Amendment. So you see all these mandates that are going on in our country. So many, you know, family members of mine, friends of ours, you know, people that go to my church, they've had to leave their jobs or take unpaid leave because they chose not to take a vaccine. And under the 14th Amendment, that should never be the case. Mm-hmm. I actually wrote a letter to my governor, Governor Ivy, because she did not sign an executive order protecting my family and friends. And I was like, hey, on the basis of the 14th Amendment, This should not be happening in America. And I love that people are actually standing up. I saw the video you did of those at Southwest Airline. I think someone's also said American. I don't know for sure on that one. And then you're saying Mm -hmm. um, bus drivers um, in Connecticut and then also um, healthcare workers are coming together and standing up and saying this is Mm -hmm. ridiculous. Like this is not okay. And so can you talk about that if there's any other things that you've seen um, of seeing people stand up and how we can be encouraged to stand up and not be afraid to do that. Yeah, well, I'm sure you probably saw this, but it was just in one day last week, 26 NYPD stations in New York City were shut down in one day due to vaccine requirements and uh, or vaccine mandates, whatever you want to say. And all of these firefighters were actually protesting in the streets of New York. They don't want you to see that, but they were like holding up signs, you know, stand against tyranny because it isn't just about a vaccine, right? A vaccine, that's your personal medical decision. I don't care if you get the vaccine. I don't care if you decide not to, whatever. It's 100% up to you. But when we aren't given the option Yep. And when we're being forced to quit our jobs, that's when it's time to take a stand. And I think that some of these firefighters are protesting mm-hmm. probably did get the vaccine, honestly. Right. But they were standing up and fighting for mm-hmm. the freedom of everyone. Because in America, that's what it's about. It's about fighting for the freedom of everyone. So looking forward, I think what's most important is that we stand together and don't let things like the government or critical race theory divide us. 
and we keep standing up and fighting for truth and fighting to defend our biblical principles, to defend our nation's constitution, if we do not build our um, you know, our principles upon a foundation that is solid, then we will fall. We will crumble yeah. and fall. The Bible talks about that. And um, something that you mentioned earlier was um, how some people are basing their thoughts and their mm-hmm. political beliefs off of their feelings, which would be detriment. Yeah. That's detrimental to our nation. Anyone who bases their political beliefs off of their feelings, you know, that that's not that's not right at all. We shouldn't be doing that. Our votes shouldn't be cast based upon our feelings about a certain person or anything like that. So looking forward, we should not focus on people. We should focus on policies and we should stand together. And instead of looking at each other like Republicans and Democrats, we should be looking at each other as Americans and we should all be fighting to preserve our constitutional freedom. Now, to anyone who does not respect the biblical foundational principles that this country is built upon or our nation's constitution, exactly. you can leave because our constitution and the Bible will not change. So looking forward in that direction, I, I see only good things for America. That's why I'm fighting. If I thought our nation's doomed, it's all over, you know, I would be like, OK, I'm not even going to I'm not even going to put any time into this. I know you'd feel the same way, but I have not given up on hope hope for this country because I have not given up on God. So we cannot give up on God as we look forward to the future of America. Great things are in store for all of us Amen. who believe Amen. and trust I love in him. That. And I'm so thankful that you see it that way because I mean, I already knew you saw it that way, but I was like, I see our culture and just the generation <laughs> coming up and they are all about feelings. Mm-hmm. It's all like, Oh, I just feel this. So I'm going to post mm-hmm. this and you're getting 100%. censored and flagged when you're speaking the truth and they're having a fact check and I'm like, they're mm-hmm. just saying whatever they want and no one's even caring or saying that the side of the left. But exactly. Has that, so I think I heard that you got, you've been censored on Instagram. Is that, is that right? Yes. I've been temporarily banned. I haven't been permanently banned. Thank goodness that happened twice today. Like, Four of my stories were taken down from January. Wow. So someone went back on my highlights and reported like four stories from January. And these were all stories I put about Trump mm-hmm. being censored on Twitter for the first time. Or not for the first time. Like he was about, this is right before he got banned on Twitter permanently. And um, this is back in January. I posted Instagram stories about this. I was like, hey, this is not right. You can't censor a sitting president of the United States. We have freedom of speech here in America. And someone literally went back and reported each of those and Instagram removed them. I was notified today for being violent and wow. they called it harmful content. I was like, this is ridiculous. The First Amendment is mm-hmm. not violent. <laughs> I don't understand. This is yeah. the least violent thing ever. It's some so confusing. parents at our church who went to the school board meetings and were standing up against the mask mm-hmm. mandates and just other things that the school board was doing, and they put them on the newspaper as, like, terrorists, they were saying. And I'm like, okay, we actually have people who hate America and hate free, like, are not mm-hmm. caring about that stuff. And it's like, we don't do really anything about that and just letting them in. But for people who are actually just standing up for the truth and just saying like hey you can't force my child to wear a mask i mean Mm -hmm. that's crazy i love how you said that too with the the vaccine is like we're not against anyone taking the vaccine that's not it we're not trying to get into like Mm -hmm. whether it's healthy or not or like we just think it's ridiculous that first of all that there's no you should have a choice like i mean that's the thing of christianity too is Mm -hmm. god doesn't force us to love him he gives us free will to say do you want to love me or not exactly that would be rape if it wasn't we didn't have a choice and so that's what we need to have is because Mm -hmm. you can do whatever you want but when they're saying oh because you know some people are saying like my body my choice like with the vaccine but they're saying hey you can't Mm -hmm. do that because you're saying we can't say that the difference is is wait that's another body inside of you so technically that's not your body there's Mm -hmm. another body living inside of you So they can't use that excuse. But is there anything else that you want to just maybe that you've been researching that you're really passionate that we didn't get to mention that you would like to share with listeners or anything like that? Um, Not quite, but I'd like to say again that I only see good things for America. Please don't get discouraged. It's easy to get discouraged, like incredibly easy to get discouraged. But it's in our discouragement. It's in these dark times that people really do flee to God. And I know that sounds like a terrible way to look at things. But I mean, look back in the Bible. It's in the bad times that people started searching for a greater purpose, started you know, seeking God and finding God. So through these times, I think that people are realizing how tyrannical our government truly is. The conservative movement, Christians, you know, we're becoming more powerful because people are turning, um, 
not to the government for help, but they're starting to turn to God for help. And moving forward, I, I see only people turning to God and I see only prosperity Amen. for I our country. Agree more because you see that too. Like you said, with election when Trump, when it was easy, we all got comfortable and we didn't really stand up. And my dad kept saying mm -hmm. like, guys, let's strike while the iron's hot while we have President Trump. But everyone's like, uh, oh. but now that they see like things being taken away and freedoms, they're like, okay, mm -hmm. let's go for it. But it's like, Okay, but even if and it gets prices. good again, let's still not mm -hmm. just let our hair down and give up. Like, till the day we die, we need to be standing up. So I just love that you're passionate about that. And um, also, I wanted to... So our verse for um, Copy Conversations is Galatians six fourteen. It says, May never boast in anything except for the cross of Jesus Christ. Because of that cross, my interests in the world have died, and the world's interests in me have died. So... I just want you to share like just, I guess, encouragement to young people because, I mean, you obviously have people like obviously you're doing something right if your stuff's being taken down, I think. So praise God. But just encouragement <laughs> to young people to s how to like you don't have to fit in and try to be like everyone else. Like mm -hmm. it's going to be OK. And I also love that you love the word of God and you love church and you love your Christian friends, but you're also not just being like, let's just shelter away. Like you're still like the Bible says in this mm -hmm. world, but not of it. Can you just give encouragement to young people who are maybe just discouraged right now? Yeah, absolutely. And um, like we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. it's hard to speak up for truth. It really is, especially now, you know, you live in fear of being censored nonstop. We can't look at things as, you know, this time here on earth. We have to look at things in the scope of eternity. What are we doing right now that's actually making an impact? And I was talking with some of my friends the other day. They're they're all great. They're all amazing. They, Like I said, they encourage me in what I do. But I was like, hey, you know, what are you guys going to do like 10 years down the road? Where do you see yourself in the future? And they're like, you know, we want to get married and we want to have kids. Um, but they didn't really know, you know, what else. And I was like, hey, that's awesome. God has a certain calling upon your life. That's wonderful. But what kind of freedom will your kids have? What are we doing to preserve their freedom? I have a one-year-old little sister. My parents adopted her back in May. And I'm thinking, you know, right now being a kid, what kind of America am I leaving for her when she's 15 and I'm 30, as crazy as that is? I'm like, what kind of freedom will she even have? And so right now, young people, don't just be thinking that if you stand up and you fight for freedom, you're fighting for your own freedom. And we obviously are. We're fighting for the freedom of not only conservatives, but Democrats and all Republicans, because freedom is very, very important. But when, we're, when we speak up and we fight for truth, we are fighting for the next generation of Americans. And so that's really, I really want to encourage you to speak up and to fight for truth and to join this movement. Ronald Reagan said, oh, sorry. Ronald Reagan said, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We have to be that generation to stop freedom from going extinct. So please stand up and fight for truth and join me in this movement. I don't want to be 50 years old looking back and thinking, wow, I could have done something. But instead, I let my freedom just slip away. In, the, in a second, I want to look back and be like, hey, guess what? I fought for freedom and it's still here. Exactly. But you know, what? it can't just be me. I one person can't preserve freedom. It has to be all of us, you know, just like you're doing, just like I'm trying to do. We all have to be in this fight together. So please, you know, you don't have to start a conservative political show. We have to all be vocal in the classroom to our friends and our churches about our freedom and preserve our freedom because we are all in this fight together. That's something the Democrats like to say a lot. We're all in this together. Yeah. But I mean, truly, looking forward to the future, we have to stand together to keep this yeah, movement alive. Yeah. And I see that. Happening. I love that. Just encouraging everyone. Just know that it's going to be OK. We have we have each other. Right. There's strength in numbers. We have each other as believers. And God is ultimately in mm -hmm. control and sovereign. So that is good. Any Amen. other piece of advice, maybe some advice that you've been given growing up, maybe like a favorite Bible verse or anything else that you would like to share with our listeners? Oh my goodness, so there's this Bible verse out of Esther, and it's perhaps this is the moment for which you were created. Now, um, I got to meet former White House Press Secretary Kaylee McEnany back in June. One of the best days of my life. She's incredible. She glorifies God in everything that she does. And the biggest advice that she gave me was leave a good impression on everyone that you meet and keep praying. You got to work hard and you got to pray, and then you will achieve any of your dreams. And so, to anyone watching, work hard and pray 
and you will achieve your dreams. Yeah. And that, that's yeah, really that's all good. I want to say. Well, tell our listeners where they can find you. I know you have a website as well and an Instagram. We'll put all that in the description, but can you just tell the listeners where they can find you? Yeah, of course. So right now, pretty much everything that I do is on my website. You can go to www.thepatriottalk.com. My Instagram is at Caroline the Patriot, and my YouTube channel is The Patriot Talk. So I really hope you guys come and join me. I really appreciate everything you do, all of your encouragement, all of your support. Yay, so I, I really appreciate that. And then also that. encourage everyone because you went to um, the Kuroko Race through that tour. But that will be here in Tucson mm-hmm. on November 15th with Charlie Kirk. So we encourage everyone to come to that message me or email me at cabrio v at cabrio v if you have any questions and we'd love to see you guys there but again caroline thank you so much and what a blessing and honor for you to be with us today thank you so much for joining us on cabrio conversations if you haven't already please make sure to like subscribe and share this video if you'd like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast just type in cabrio conversations you can also follow us on instagram to check out our behind the scenes at calvary conversations and at Turning Point Faith Calvary. Thanks so much to our sponsors, Mission Heating and Cooling. Please make sure to check out their website in the description below. Also, we are so, so thankful for everyone who supports Calvary Conversation. And if you would like to support Calvary Conversations with a one-time gift or a monthly gift, you guys can do that in the description below. Thanks so much, guys, and God bless.